welcome to Yoga Rocks Box. This week um, with Jodranko Mitlek, that's mm -hmm. how you say it. Yes. It? Mm -hmm. Yes, and we've retired to the piece of the yoga room this week. So uh, Jodranko, just by years, mm -hmm. is probably one of our most experienced teachers that we have at Yoga Rocks. So how long have you been practicing? Mm -hmm. I'm practicing yoga over the 40 years. 40 years? Yes, 40 years and uh, for 30 years I'm teaching already. And you've spent yoga. quite many years in India, is that right? Yeah, I was traveling in India meeting uh, some very uh, rare masters in Himalaya, like Maharishi Swami Demurti. He was over 100 years old and then he was a, as a legend of Himalayas. I was learning from him in Yamuna Nagar, in one his uh, monastery in uh, Himalayas, uh, his system of Himalayan yoga, especially the exercises for the spine, which are very efficient and um, it's kind of therapeutic yoga also to recover the spine from all problems, different problems. And also I was traveling to Chennai there and teaching from A.G. Mohan about the yoga therapy and uh, the system of yoga from Sri Krishna Macharya. And uh, also some other yogis I was meeting, yoga charyas, and I cooperate with uh, National Institute of Yoga in uh, Delhi, Muraji Desai. I teach sometimes their students there and uh, so like this I don't uh, practice uh, and I don't teach some specific style of yoga. Mm. I learn many styles but I found that uh, the best kind of approach to person is individual approach according to the need of a person. So then I see which kind of practice, which way to modify the uh, practice of yoga to suit the need of a person. And um, I think yoga has three main pillars of the practice. This is physical aspect of practice, like uh, asanas and uh, different more dynamic exercises, like uh, Ashtanga yoga, or um, this uh, they call traditionally this um, Vyayana exercise. So like exercising, and asana is more static positions. And then uh, Pranayama, breathing techniques and meditation. So there are three levels of our existence, body, breath and the mind. So to address all these three and uh, then to see to which person in which way to apply that practice, this I found somehow my way to teach. So body, breath and mind. Yes. And Jodranko has recently, his, his new book, just going to plug it because mm. look it's massive. So all his knowledge is now in here and it's totally amazing. It's got everything in, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's totally amazing. It's really the... I was writing about five years that book, yeah. but it is all my 30 years of teaching yoga yeah. in a way um, experience inside. Yeah. And uh, yes. <laughs> so what I want to ask you mm -hmm. is um, the other day we were doing Gayatri Mantra, mm -hmm. like a lot of our teachers use Gayatri Mantra. Mm -hmm. And the problem with teaching yoga in the West, if you like, is that people are confused as to whether yoga is a religion mm -hmm. or not. And if people find it a little bit religious, then sometimes they find that a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and especially this is this comes out, I think, when chanting mantras because a lot mm -hmm. of the mantras have religious connotations. Mm -hmm. So, we were doing Gayatri Mantra the other day, and you were talking about it, and you said it definitely mm -hmm. isn't a religious yes. mantra. So, can you just tell us a little bit about about mm -hmm. Gayatri Mantra, just briefly, and and why? Why scientifically, if you like, it's mm -hmm. not, not necessarily religious? Yes. So there are actually many scientists from the West and uh, experts in uh, Sanskrit and uh, Indology. They were studying Vedas and Vedic literature. And it's very interesting what they found is that the flora and fauna described in the uh, ancient Vedic text, for example in Rig Veda and some others, is not at all corresponding to the flora and fauna of India. So it is still a big question from where this knowledge, from where Vedas are coming. But basically what uh, is present now is that the, on one conference of UNESCO, the Veda is recognized as a cultural heritage of all humanity. And the first also sentence which they send in the universe by this big uh, you know, radio to, to emit, uh, it was the first sentence from Rig Veda in Sanskrit. <laughs> so in that way, Veda is beyond religion. This Rig Veda, for example, it is uh, just the 
science of consciousness because Veda means knowledge and the knowledge is the faculty of consciousness. So Veda is present in everyone's uh, mind, in everyone's consciousness, just we need to explore that uh, value. And specifically yoga also is the science of uh, mind, breath and body. How to have uh, good health, how to live a uh, full potential of the mind, and this is the most important thing in yoga. And um, in India, yoga was present there many times, many, many thousands of years. And naturally, each part of the planet Earth has its own culture, has its own religion developed. So the Hinduism, for example, the Hindu religion, they took elements from yoga and they incorporated it into their own structure. So then they related these practices, physical asanas and pranayamas, they integrated into their religious practice. For example, in Gayatri Mantra is coming from Rig Veda. And it is not addressed to any specific god, but it is addressed as a, uh, uh, to the highest ruling intelligence in the universe, which guides life. So even the physics says that there is some intelligence, some laws of nature which are guiding the life in all the universe. So, uh, and Maharishi Patanjali, who is uh, great, was a great uh, scientist in yoga and uh, defined yoga you know, in Patanjali Yoga Sutras, he uh, gave name to that intelligence like Ishvara. Ishvara means just ruling intelligence of the whole universe. And religious people will say this is God. So whatever name we give to that level, and people were addressing that level because uh, they wanted um, to relate to their source and to get the power from that source for their own life so that they can uh, awaken in their mind that cosmic intelligence so that they become very wise, you know, they can understand their own origin, their own life, their relation to whole universe and for that purpose they were using Gayatri Mantra which was mentioned in Rigveda and uh, it has just, it's not mentioning any specific god or uh, Gayatri Mantra means the meter of Gayatri, it is 24 syllables and it's mentioned in these 24 syllables of Gayatri Mantra is 24 tattvas, the basic elements of which it is built all the creation. So we can say this is the Vedic physic hmm? in Sankhya, one aspect of Vedic literature mentioned, where it is all the cosmology explained, how the creation starts and from which elements and how it is developed. And even the modern scientists in the quantum physics, they found parallel of Sankhya with the modern research, the explanation of how everything is starting. So if you if you quite <coughs> anti-religion, and as some people are, then practicing yoga yes. doesn't clash with that at all. Not at all. Really any religion, science. yes, you can uh, be, you can practice any kind of religion and practice yoga. There is no clashing. So yeah. yoga is out of any religion, and if, and also Gayatri Mantra is universal mantra. Yeah. So it is not belonging to any religion, yeah. and it can. Uh, really make very good uh, settling of the mind, clearing and then bringing very good effects of oh. this practice. <laughs> so um, I don't know whether you can see, but this week we do have some, some foam mattresses down in the yoga room and we don't have these all the time, but these are for the transcendental meditation because this week Jodhan mm -hmm. is teaching Dental meditation. <laughs> okay, can you and so can you just tell us because for a lot of people they they've heard the term transcendental meditation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they know very little about it. So yes. could you just tell us very briefly, just basically yes, what, what it, it is? is. Yeah. Yes. So I spent many years with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and I'm teacher of that meditation. And what uh, is basic in that meditation is trans to transcend means to go beyond. Yes. And meditation means uh, medium and ire, meditire, it's Latin word. So medium means the source and ire means to go to that level. So it is the process of going to your own source yes. and in that process you are, you are going beyond the mental activity. So this is the process of transcendental meditation. You come back to your own self. So you uh, don't want to be out of yourself <laughs> too much. <laughs> So it's good sometime during day to come back to yourself, you know, to settle in your pure state of your pure awareness and then uh, your mind relaxes completely. It gets very deep rest and then it becomes recovered and then because it is conscious rest, then the mind becomes very uh, silent and sharp at the same time. So the stability of perception increase, the memory increase, all the creativity is developing, all the faculties of the mind are developing. 
through that experience. And the body at the same time gets a rest which is two times deeper than in a deep sleep. So it is recovering body from deep rooted stresses, which are the cause of many psychosomatic diseases. Mm. So it's very simple technique, also non-religious, practiced twice a day, morning and afternoon, just to bring balance in the life and to improve the faculty of the mind and the body and the health and the relation with surrounding and everything. So it's, uh, here we have a group, practitioners of Transcendental Meditation and their advanced technique also, Yogi Flying, because they found that with this program it has a very good effect also on the surrounding. This is um, achieving kind of state of very high coherence in the collective consciousness. <laughs> and Yogi Flying is uh, this advanced program of TM, and which is basically based on the knowledge on Patanjali Yoga Sutras. So they say when you apply these sutras on that level of pure consciousness, then they manifest their uh, what is supposed to manifest, what is written there in the Yoga Sutras. So there is specific yogic line when you um, uh, have certain sutra for that, and then uh, the body reacts, and then body gets transformed into the value of space, as it is mentioned in that sutra, and gets ability to become light, physically light, and then to go up into the air. So, so this is um, one program which we conduct here, and also Kaya Kalpa program. It's theme of this uh, this year here, and this is special program for rejuvenation of. Uh, enjoying the beautiful nature here around and specifically this five element therapy we do in the nature because these all five elements are building up our body and five elements are around us in the nature so we use this pure form of the five elements here in in your place so that we can strengthen the five elements in our body because you can open these elements in the surrounding only where everything is pure so when the water is very pure, then you can enter the water and uh, open yourself to that water to purify the element of water in your body, you know, in the air, in the sun, and the, the soil, the sand, everything is ideal here for that program. So we enjoy this very much. <laughs> yeah, it's been lovely. It's been totally lovely talking to you. Thank you, Jadranko. Um, yes. Yeah, so we could go on for a long time because Jadranko knows so much, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll stop there. That's great. Okay, thank you very, yes, very much. Thank you okay. very much. That's all from Yoga Rocks Box. We'll see you next time.